Ready for a digital dive? You're listening to the GZ Chop Shop Podcast, the weekly tech and gaming media podcast that breaks down the latest news, lore, and more. So plug in, because the GZ Chop Shop starts now. What's up, everybody? Project Itachi here, joined by my good friend and co-host, Wardners. Welcome back to mm-hmm. another week of the GZ Chop Shop Podcast, your go-to podcast for everything tech and gaming related. So, what are we talking about this week? Well, let's start things off with one of my favorite developers, Microsoft. Yes, if you guys have been listening to the show for a while, you know how I feel about Microsoft. Um, But no, actually, this one is more kind of like an interesting thing than just downright like, okay, that's shady. I feel like what they've done could evolve into shady. But right it now, will. it's kind of like, hmm, interesting. It will. Um, so for those who want to know, Microsoft has entered, or it's more like extended, into a 10-year agreement with British tech company EE. Now, tech company EE deals in mobile. And Microsoft's big thing has been cloud service, live service, gaming. Oh, they're trying to make... And mobile gaming. And mobile gaming. And they're trying to make their presence let's just be honest they want to go 100 percent digital they want to make gaming a completely digital ecosystem where you could just go in you pull a game you want to play as long as they want to make it available on game pass you play it and then you it goes back into the cloud until they bring it back whatever they want to make it where gaming is just this constant influx of revenue so they joined with British company EE, which is no small company. That's a big mobile company. And they've entered a 10-year agreement. Now, here's the thing where I say, that's interesting. Microsoft, as anyone knows, is always eager to brag about what their plan is. They're like, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Yet, they've been nothing but crickets about their 10-year partnership with EE. They announced it. They announced that they've done it, but they have not explained what they plan to do with it. And EE hasn't said anything either. Everyone is silent. So all we know is that Microsoft has entered this agreement with a giant mobile company, British mobile company. It's going to be for 10 years. That could mean anything. Exclusivity rights. Priority. The EE might be obligated to not partner or allow any competitors on their mobile devices. Who knows? But Microsoft is just saying, hey, we're proud to be partnered with big British company EE. We're looking forward to this 10 year agreement we've extended to. It's going to be great. OK, doing what? Yeah, we're not going to tell. We're not going to tell you. So that's why I say interesting that it will eventually evolve into shady. I mean, mobile devices, that, that's, that's affecting a lot of people. So, Microsoft, what's, what's, your, what's your end game here? Like, what do you think? What do you think they're going to do? I got a theory, but I wouldn't know what you think they're going to do. I mean, it's a mobile company, so the only thing I can honestly think of is, is you know, phones. Or rights to specific types of apps. They, 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 they haven't given much information, which, I mean, like you said, is pretty weird. Usually they, like you said, they brag about it and they, they put it out there. So it is, anytime Microsoft's quiet, it makes me think they're fucking something up. I mean, you know, Mixer was kind of their biggest mess up, but there, there's been a ton of times that they've made contracts or invested in things or created things and they went to shit pretty quickly. So. I'm wondering if they're doing something outside the box and they're being quiet about it until they actually have a concrete plan that they know won't blow up in their face. Now, some articles, they speculate that this could mean that Microsoft is trying to bring PC games, their PC games, to mobile. Console games have already hit mobile, but PC games have it. I see the look on your face. <laughs> You're trying to figure out how is this going to work? <laughs> there's, there's a couple games I play. I don't even think I have enough keys to play it. 
takes up my whole keyboard. So that's some of the speculation that maybe they're trying to, because EE doesn't have a cloud-based service. They don't have their own cloud service. There it is. Yeah. There it is. I didn't know that. Yeah, they don't have their own cloud service. They're trying to expand on the cloud service. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And if, if Microsoft basically foots the bill or helps them engineer their own cloud service, that gives Microsoft what? Say so over what goes on that cloud service and how it's handled. And EE, like I said before, is not a small mobile company. They're huge. That would give them, and this is smart on Microsoft's part, because the Europe as a whole, they had that big law passed on ads, right? You cannot advertise to the people of Europe without basically their express permission. You could be fined, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I, f- I completely forgot about that. That makes this even more strange because what's Microsoft super big about? And they're even talking about adding to the Xbox ads, ads. So that in game ads at, at that in game ads. So how do you circumvent that? You join one of the biggest mobile tech companies. <laughs> There's the shady. A There's the shady. There's the shady. There's the shady. That's why I said started mm. as interesting will evolve into shady. There it is. So you get around and here's the thing. You then don't have to pay a fine nor pay a bill. The only bill, if they implement a cloud service and they let EE and they say, we'll let you in our cloud service. The cash of that is. We now get to advertise because it's our cloud service. So now it falls under our laws, our jurisdictions. So then they get to do the same thing and get around their own laws. That, that yep. there's the shady. Yep. I didn't know they this get- much about it when you, when you brought it up. So mm-hmm. it was kind of new information for me. So there it is. So Microsoft has found a way to circumvent the laws. These companies think we're stupid. Like we're on to them. <laughs> I can't do anything about it, but I'm watching. But we're I'm watching. looking. I see you. Yeah. All you Microsoft lovers. I yep. say that, but I mean, what do PCs run on? So but now I'm Microsoft still, has found a way to circumvent. Still eyeballing them. They found a way to circumvent the. Every time the there's laws. an update on my computer, I wait a few days to listen to everyone else's complaints. And then I'm like, okay. Oh yeah. Microsoft updates are like the absolute worst. <laughs> they always break the computer, but as I sat there and I read about, it, I said, okay, great. On, you know, everyone's looking at it. Like, okay. This means PC games might come to mobile and, and cloud gaming expands. And I said, that's great. But what's the real goal here? <laughs> and I started to like dig into it. And when I read that, that EE does not have their own cloud service, I said, ooh, Microsoft saw an opportunity and they took it because this gives them a leg up on rivals like Nintendo and Sony who don't have that kind of partnership with a company in Europe as far as we know. And if Microsoft has this 10-year partnership with EE, I'm sure somewhere in there, there's a legal obligation that EE won't make a similar partnership with, well, they can't with like Sony or Nintendo. I mean, Microsoft's got them now for 10 years. That's 10 years. Microsoft can advertise and do whatever they want in the European market with no repercussions. You know, you got to hand it to Nintendo for evenly competing with Sony and Microsoft in the gaming in the gaming area. And they're not even contracted, uh, as far as I know, at least with with any with any tech companies outside of gaming itself. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're not into like phones and, and anything like that. They don't have TVs. People, what? See, I'm, it's funny you said that about Nintendo not partnering with mobile. <laughs> but you finish your thought and then I'll tell you why. No, by all means. <laughs> so I'm God damn some. it, Nintendo. <laughs> I was giving them leeway because those greedy bastards. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I'm going to read this to you. God. Nintendo and mobile giant DN- DNA, spelled D E N A, launch mysterious Nintendo system. When subsidiary. did this happen? You were good. You were on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> and then the t- and this, this is recent as of like April 3rd. 
had you said that like last Son month, of a bitch Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Nintendo has entered into that realm. However, it's still under the banner of the name Nintendo, and it's called Nintendo Systems. Just nobody knows anything about it. And unless you can read Japanese, which if you guys can read Japanese, I implore you go visit the website. It has some information on what they're kind of going for. It just has some of the information from a press release they did in November. It states that the company will work to strengthen the digitalization of Nintendo's business and create new value added services. Whatever that means. Which is what I wanted to ask you and see and speculate on, but it seems you were under the impression that Nintendo was still flying solo. <laughs> That's the one thing I could give the Nintendo was that they were flying solo and still competing with Sony and Microsoft. Just utilizing their gaming. Yeah. Yeah, they were. But to to be fair to Nintendo, they really had no choice anymore. Because Microsoft, Microsoft started this dumpster fire when they started trying to buy everything under the sun. In response, Sony had to start buying things because Microsoft what Microsoft's goal, if no one started matching their pace with the exception of Nintendo, they would have bought the entire gaming ecosystem. And then you would not own your games. Your games would be long-term rentals. Fuck it. You know what? Where's my Nintendo phone? <laughs> that, I'm so glad you said that. Cause that's what I was thinking. I said, bro, Nintendo's next console is probably not going to be a console. It'll, they'll, they'll release the Nintendo Switch Pro, but after that, I bet you it's going to be a Nintendo phone. Imagine for a moment if Nintendo put out a phone similar to what we see with Android or Apple, but Nintendo's version. You had a Nintendo whatever the fuck phone. I really think those would sell. Absolutely. I, I really think they wouldn't just sell, but they would easily compete with Nintendo or not Nintendo. I can't talk today with uh with android and apple just off the name alone yeah because i'll tell you right now if a nintendo phone dropped tomorrow i would trade in my iphone to get a nintendo phone and it, and i would be abusing and imagine what that would that do phone. to american companies like apple and google oh. when they have to compete with a phone that isn't from them and sells very well just off the name alone. What what the fuck would a Nintendo phone look like? I could, that's what I wouldn't know. Honestly, like I would do it just to have access to all the, all the Zelda and Mario games I want. Of course we're off track. I'm speculating here, but I mean, if we're going to go down this route, Nintendo, and you're going to do this, at least give us a phone. I think that's what they're going to work towards. I want a Nintendo smart. I think the first step will be, more intricate cloud gaming because Microsoft is has pushed that ecosystem so far that we've accepted it. And a lot of gamers are now used to it. Like I have Game Pass on my phone. I have the Xbox thing on my phone, literally. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to these things. So I at least know how it operates, what they're going for. The Nintendo Wii sounds more like a phone than it does a console. (laughs) <laughs> who knows that might be how they revive it but when i saw that article pop up and i said nintendo's doing what now if they're entering the mobile ecosystem it means that they see what microsoft and sony are doing as credible threats because nintendo does not budge off of their business motto their their whole business plan unless they see a reason to. And for years, they've not budged on things. And it works. They usually, you know, for the longest time, they held off on raising their game prices, but they've they've matched. And now I'm starting to see why they probably have started to do this match. They're going to have to be able to pay for whatever this partnership is that they're doing with DNA. And whatever their future plan is. Because... Microsoft wants to dominate 
and they're going about it in any way, shape, or form using whatever tools they have at their disposal. Sony is responding in kind, which with this deal that Microsoft's made with EE, in about six months' time, max, we're going to see Sony make another deal. I'm calling it now. We're going to see Sony shut make another deal because Nintendo's getting into the mobile market. Now, here's what I want you to process, and this just clicked with me. What has Microsoft just made a partnership with? What, t- what type of company? Phone company. And Nintendo? Mo- mo- mobile company. And Nintendo? Players. Apparently a mobile company. A mobile company. So that leaves Sony, who they do make their own phones. They already do make their own phones. But so does Microsoft. But they're all, but Microsoft and Sony are now with third parties. So that leaves Sony to possibly do what? All I know is if, if Nintendo comes out and they start selling TVs and mobile devices, I, I'm calling it, it's going to be a rough ride for Microsoft. Absolutely. Which, you know, it's a long time coming anyways, but I guess we'll see what happens. I'm not going to lie. I could, because Nintendo puts enough ingenuity into their craft a Nintendo TV would be awesome. Here's the thing I could say about a Nintendo TV. And Nintendo, if you do this, I want it stamped on this date that I said it before you did it. You should hire me. <laughs> oh, I'm sure if it's a thing, they, they, they've been talking about it for years. But a Nintendo TV would probably be the number one selling TV across the board. Because one, just how entertaining turning that TV on itself probably would be. Can you imagine turning your TV on to be greeted by Mario running across the screen? And it acted as a console and you could play any games, download any, any games, Nintendo that were, game that were also available on the console. It's, it's the, the perfect family friendly television. I was going to say it's going to be the most family friendly TV, but probably the best parental controls. If you have any external Nintendo console, effortless connectivity. If they get into cloud system, it could pretty much reinvent what the Wii U did better. You can then move your game from the console to the TV easily. If they get into the mobile system, you can move it from your phone to the TV effortlessly. Or your phone and TV could connect. The switch was just the beginning, people. The switch was probably, yeah, the switch was just the beginning. Nintendo switch just was just beginning. Looking down from their cliff of hierarchy. Yeah. <laughs> upon the other gaming consoles. Biding its time. A Nintendo TV would sell exceedingly well. A Nintendo cell phone will sell exceedingly well. I have zero doubt about that. That phone would outsell any new color iPhone came out with, any new super sharp edge looking Android that came out. The Nintendo could come out looking like the SNES controller and it would sell. No doubt. I have zero doubt. And if that's where they're going... They're heading in the right direction. Microsoft is going to wind up losing more. Not, you know, they're going to lose a lot of money. <laughs> All that money they're spending right now. I'll be honest. I would be extremely pleased to, to know. Let's say they let's say Nintendo came out with a with a phone and a TV. I would be so happy to know that Microsoft and Google were getting completely shit on and everybody was giving up all of that stuff and Apple phones for Nintendo products that do the same thing, but better. Yeah, <sighs> but I can dream though. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what yeah. these guys, uh, what, 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 what their plans are. I didn't know that they bought a, they, that they partnered they with DNA. With a, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. That's, it's funny that, that, that just happened and I had no idea. <laughs> it was like, you really, like, yeah, thank you Nintendo for never partnering. And then I'm like, Ooh, yeah, about that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, Nintendo as, as we talked about it, too. I mean, I mean, I, I, you know, I, it clicks with me that I understand why they would do it. I just thought it was pretty amazing that they were holding their own without being, without doing the same things that the other companies were doing. Yeah. But But I guess when your hand is eventually forced to play ball, you got to play ball in whatever way, you know, works for you. And they found, they found a company that works for them. So we'll see. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you think? Nintendo's partnership with DNA is going to be like, um, would you buy a Nintendo phone? Would you buy a Nintendo TV? Definitely want to hear your thoughts on that. So check out our website, osntacmedia.com. Click on the show's page and leave your thoughts at the GZ Chop Shop podcast. Definitely want to hear it. Um, 
Final thought coming back to Microsoft, but something different. Um, the Microsoft Showcase, which I believe is scheduled for June 6th of this year, is going to be slated to be two hours. Oh, that's right. They're, they're all, all the gaming companies are now split off in their own factions and they all have yeah, showcases. Yeah, since now. pretty much the collapse of E3, we're just going to call a spade a spade, since E3 is pretty much done. Um, all of them are going, this shows you, they all want, to, they all want all that attention individually. And Microsoft coming out saying, we're going to have a two-hour showcase, a movie-length showcase. They, they, they plan to hoard that attention. Apparently, it's speculated that 90 minutes of it is going to be actual Xbox showcasing. And then the last 30 minutes is supposed to be all about Starfield. Um, Starfield Direct taking up the last part, but a lot of people are hoping to see some things about some exclusive IPs. Cause this is also going to be, it's Xbox. Yeah, and that's true. Cause my, out of all the gaming uh, companies, Microsoft has hardly any IPs that are truly their own. Mm. They, uh, most of them have been purchased after they were successful um, or shared with other, other companies. So they, they only have a handful of, of IPs that actually belong to them. Yeah, and they, they the recently called they started, foul they over it, which is hilarious to me. Like you can call foul over something when you you stepped into the gaming market years, like a, like a decade and a half after. When, when did the Xbox come out? About about two thousand, two thousand one, yeah, like, like that, like early two thousand. Yeah, like so almost two decades after after consoles were were a thing, and, and other other people were already situated, and they're going to call foul. But that's neither here nor there. But so. Their showcase is slated to be about two hours starting at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time going into uh, 12 p.m. So if you guys are interested in the Xbox slash Bethesda showcase, June 6th, <clears throat> you can uh, mark your calendars, check it out there. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be watching it. Two hours seems like a bit lengthy for me to watch for one company's presentation. Like I preferred the, that was one of my loves of E3 for two hours. I was getting multiple companies and it was like, it was like a wine tasting. You get a little taste here, a little taste here, a little taste here. And it, it, it gave you excitement across the board. So if one of them lets you down, you had something else to look forward to, but two hours, like Microsoft, you know, if I give you two hours of my time and you still let me down, <laughs> yeah, that's a tall order for Microsoft because you got to think like like I kind of just mentioned before, Sony and Nintendo have been in this game way longer than they have. Well, Sony not that much longer, but lo but but long enough to had already had the experience, uh, and then especially Nintendo, and they all have a just a huge list of of IPs that belong, and and they all excel in IPs and and games that just belong to them. So Microsoft. You know, I, I wonder if they're going to be coming out with, like you said, like any new IPs that are actually going to make them stand out. And I think that would be a big player because if if they're not if they don't put out any personal IPs and I'm not talking just a continuation of uh, an IP that's been around like another Halo game or something like they need they need new IPs that are exciting and get people's attention, because I think if they don't put out new stuff that belongs solely to solely for the xbox i feel like it's going to be recepted pretty poorly yeah i mean I, I i you know a lot of people that are xbox fans would probably disagree with me but i'll say it halo would exist with or without xbox it was a game that would have found another console had xbox not been around the xbox Absolutely. was only successful because of halo yeah <clears throat> Had because it not been for Halo, we may them. not even have Xbox right now. A lot of people will disagree with me on that, but I stand firmly on it. I mean, it, it was the number one reason for buying the original Xbox. Yeah. So they need another Halo. Not not the game, but you know what I mean. They, they need some more games that capture a similar level of attention and excitement that are that is just for the Xbox. And I think they know that. I think Microsoft's model right now is why 
why make your own success when you can just buy someone else's? I mean, that, and that's what they do. They buy out everything that's already successful. We know that. And hell, when they do that, they tend to run half of it, if not more, to the to the ground. Um, but I guess we'll see. We'll see what the showcase promises, um, because Microsoft is big on making promises and then using the graces of their fan base to justify them when they don't meet those promises. So we shall see. We shall see. But what are your guys' thoughts? Are you going to be watching the two hour Xbox Bethesda showcase in June? Um, and how do you feel about the Xbox ecosystem? Coming back to what we were talking about in the beginning of the episode. Do you think Xbox is making some good moves? If you are an Xbox player, how do you feel about the ecosystem? Do you feel Microsoft is making solid business deals? Is it beneficial? We want to hear from everybody. So make sure to leave us your thoughts on our website, osntacmedia.com. Visit the show page, click on the GZ Chop Shop podcast and leave us your thoughts. Anyway, that's all the time we've got for this episode this week. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode and you want some of the extended podcast episodes that are a little bit longer, we can go more in depth. Visit our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash OSM media to get our extended episodes exclusively available to Patreons. They will not play anywhere else. And they're way more candid and way more in depth uh, where we get to share our thoughts a little bit more there. And visit our store, the GZShop.com for exclusive merchandise and logos and a whole bunch of stuff. We have new stuff coming out every week and we have a spring sale going on right now, 20% off. So go get yourself some amazing merchandise. Anyway, you guys have been amazing. Take care of yourself and each other. And we'll catch all you wonderful people on the next podcast. Later.